Welcome back to Chris and Retro. Uh, thanks for tuning back into the show tonight. Um, tonight's subject is going to be a, a tougher subject that I'm going to talk about, and I'll, I'll get into that in a second. Um, but currently in this country, we spend a lot of time talking about the opioid crisis, you know, and I've got some numbers here. In 2020, it was $68,000, 68,000, 68,000 overdose deaths. Um, 2021, there was 98,000 overdose deaths. 22 was 107,000. And so far year to date, we're over 111,000. Um, <clears throat> that has been a very prominent thing. I work with Shatterproof as a volunteer and, you know, we spend a lot of time trying to find a way to curb that trajectory, but there doesn't seem to be a lot of success in slowing it down. Um, despite, you know, medically assisted treatment, all kinds of innovation and in treatment, funding, um, opioid lawsuits that put a bunch of funding into programs, yet it still climbs. Addiction is a, a baffling monster that is very difficult to beat. My argument has always been that there's going to be a few that come out of that fire successfully, and there's going to be a vast majority of them that don't do don't make it. <clears throat> so what do we do with that? Well, I've also talked about the fact that we got to go one layer deep and work on the kids and, and help prevent that because many of the, the young people that are currently dying right now um, are trauma based. You know, they, they started using because of some trauma in their life. And I saw an article today, and I'll, I'll share that with you, um, that really illuminated a real problem with the opioid crisis that kind of doubles down on, on an already very tragic situation. Um, earlier in the year, way earlier in the year, I shared with you guys a study from SAMHSA, um, which is uh, the national organization, uh, federal organization that, that works with uh, substance use disorder. And they had a 2020 release of, of mental health in, in children. And they noticed a significant rate jump in um, uh, depressive events that caused impairment. And so over and over again, we're hearing our kids getting pounded and mental health illness just um, expanding. There's just so many things going on with kids right now in their brains and they're just getting pounded. At the same time, their attention span and the, their instant gratification is, you know, less than three seconds to catch their attention on something and keep their attention. We've really messed up our kids. And so they're struggling. The, I'm going to share with you an article that I, I saw today. Um, it was published in a couple different locations. I'm going to go with the one that I believe to be demonstrate the least amount of bias. So um, there was a second article that was on the same subject, and it, it said rise in child suicide in the U.S. linked in part to the nation's opioid crisis. Uh, that, that's this headline. I'm sorry. The other one was part of an addiction magazine, and they said opioid crisis indirectly drives up child suicide rates. So the, it's interesting how they change this, the headline and, and imply it a little differently. Um, but in this particular article, um, there's some pretty powerful re revelations, I believe. And so uh, I'll, I'll go through what the article says, and then I'll make some comments on it and um, you know, talk a little bit about my experience in this area. So it's saying this is published on December 4th, so it's recent. And it says the rise in ch uh, child, children, su child suicide rates in the United States since 2010 has fueled in part, in part by the nation's opioid crisis. Now, there's other matters, um, you know, some of it COVID and isolation and all these other things, but which previous studies have found increased rates of child neglect, altered household living and arrangements. So even in a situation where a kid is not killing themselves, um, the those are successful. So the suicide rate right here is talking about successful completions of a suicide attempt. That's saying that the ones out of the all of the ones that tried or all the ones that thought about it, there's a rise in the ones that are actually completing it. So how many more are even thinking about it or trying it or, or you know, how many, you know, it's just it's tragic to think about how big this number actually is. The analysis links the rise in child suicide rates to reformate. Um, reformulation of prescription opioids to discourage misuse, which led to a steep rise in the use of illicit opioids such as heroin and may contribute to the growth of illicit opioid markets. So th apparently they're saying some reformulation of, of um, medically assisted treatment that was a cause of it. I would say that what, what this article then goes on to say, um, the, the use of illicit opioids did not increase among children. It appears they were negatively affected by a broader effects of the illicit opioid crisis. And I think that's huge. And that's from David Powell here that, that's doing the research. Um, further on down the article, it says, citing that child suicide rates, several medical groups, including the American Academy of Pediatrics, declared a national state of emergency in children's mental health in 2021. And that's relatively around what that other article was I shared with you before. The opioid crisis itself is considered a national emergency, but these two crises have generally been considered independent prior to re this research. So I want to pause there. 
the thing that this is what this is so impactful about this is that um to me anyway is a couple different things so one um we hear about the no, the leading cause of death in kids is gun violence now i always hear that and i understand that there's a massive political bias in that statement now this the facts may be that but it's not because people are uh, randomly taking their legal weapons and going out and shooting kids so i think that's been a very twisted um stat to be for political gain this one is not being mentioned at all and that's the second leading cause of death in children is is suicide they and in children, they've seen no hope to the point they want to take their lives. And they're citing that a significant impact of that is the opioid crisis. Now, why would that be? Well, it's parents, you know, parents using one. Pa I can't tell you how many people I know that at least one parent has overdosed and that that were at one time using that has overdosed in the past. Or in many cases, both parents are still in and out of the you know, rehab and whatever else trying to keep it together. I'm not I'm not giving the parents, you know, any undue um disrespect on that because of how how the addiction works in people's minds and what it does to you and in fact they may have been victims of childhood trauma that got them there in the first place but yet these kids are just sitting here just getting crushed under the weight of this because mom or dad or mom and dad are doing this just awfully draining dance for every single person around them it's such a toxic environment to be in when people are in active use it's so stressful um, you don't know when your loved one's coming home or if they're coming home you don't know what they're up to. You don't know if they're safe. You don't know why, why they're stealing things or taking money or, or, or you can't believe a word that comes out of their mouth. And active use, you know, I've always heard this, in the, whether you're an alcoholic or you're in, in drug addiction, um, the, the one thing you know for sure you can believe about a drug addict is anything else, anything that comes out of their mouth is not believable. Same thing with an alcoholic. So having said that, we're talking about people in the middle of the crisis. It's already too late. They're in it. You know, and what you can do is hope to help them get out of it. And so I'm not in any way trying to crush people that are struggling with addiction. What I'm suggesting is, is that all these programs based on the numbers alone are not helping addiction. They're, they're not slowing it even down. We're up 100. We went from 107,000 deaths in last year to 111,000 so far this year. And, and we've got all these programs and all these lawsuits and all this money dumped into programs and absolutely nothing has changed. It's, it's still growing. And in fact, the only thing it's done is created more innovative drugs to be out in the street and people are killing themselves even worse. So I say all that to say, okay, so what do we do about it? Well, this article is pointing out we've got some really hurting children out there. And in some respect, it's been directly attributed. Not, they're saying a, a significant factor attributing to this is illicit drug use by others, parents, family members, whatever going on around them. So I would suggest that our win is going to be with the kids. How do we get how do we get ahead of the opioid crisis and how do we get ahead of suicide? We start investing in children in a way that we offer hope. A possibility that there's a better life for them. That that there's avenues for them to find progress. If I look at um if I look at people that are that have successful completion of their their programs and have successful lives beyond addiction. Every single one of them has something they're making progress in. They're either getting a job or they're on a project or they're part of a volunteer program. But we have to at least feel day in and day out that we're making progress. We got kids sitting in corners on video games and, and iPads and, and phones and things like that. And all their world is based on this device that's in front of them. That's not progress unless it's a video game they're trying to level up in. And I would hardly say, say that's a way to sustain somebody's mental health. You know, you see a lot of kids now, I think a lot of parents are starting to invest in kids and their labor, you know, and getting outside and getting used to the being in the woods and or being out in this, you know, doing work in the, in the city communities, um, you know, doing small labor around the house. There's plenty and plenty of reward for having kids be part of something that's that's showing progress. Give them something greater to dream about. Currently, many children, their entire world during COVID was their house. Many of them had a house with people with addiction. Their whole world was immersed in this toxic, drug-saturated or alcohol-saturated environment. We should not be surprised that our kids are struggling. For me, uh, as a father of uh, several children and having currently a stepdaughter that's seven and a two-year-old daughter and a granddaughter, I am c gravely concerned about the, these statistics. And I, I look at it because um, my daughter's mother and father are both, um, you know, we're both um, in recovery. Um, we both have addiction history. 
And that is really a, a problem for me. Now, you'll hear in the background of this audio right now, I've got a two-year-old that's being really loud right now, and you can hear in the background. You know, I worry about her and, you know, how well she's going to take this new world. And what am I doing to make sure that she has hope and opportunities? You know, isolation is not good for children, and we do an awful lot of that for kids, with kids. You know, I think about how do we invest in the kids' lives and help them see more? It is a matter of helping them see beyond these Win, short window circumstances. We put everything right in the front of their face and that's their whole world. And whatever's pumped through that thing that's right in the front of their face, that's all they know. And there's so much more hope and so much more opportunity for them. And I believe as adults, it's time for us to invest in them in such a significant way to help them overcome these unbelievable um, generational curses that they face. I am passionate about this subject because we these. I, I think it's the only way to win. And I could be wrong. I'm not a clinician. I'm certainly no expert. I'm not a PhD. and I'm definitely not a researcher of any nature. I'm just a person that's a fellow traveler and I've seen things firsthand. And I'm also looking at statistics like this and I get so concerned. And then I look at 111,000 overdoses deaths today, this year. And I look at a rising um, suicide rate amongst kids. And this is an attribution to it. So what happens when these kids that didn't successfully complete suicide and they start using, how much more is that going to go? And how much more are those kids going to be killing themselves? I mean, the cycle just doesn't seem to end. We've got to offer them hope. And hope is done by, by getting them into programs and being volu volunteering and, and, and contributing in their lives. If you're a parent and you have a child, invest. Invest. Fathers, step up. As men, it is our job. I don't give a crap what the world is telling us about masculinity or anything else. It's time to be a man and step up and be there for your family. There's only one person going to stand in the, wall, in the gap when, when all heck is breaking loose. It's just the way it is. Parents, our job is to stand in front of for our kids and be, hold them, help them, and help them have better days. I'm not sure if this video is informative, encouraging, or scolding in some respects. I would say take it up for whatever you hear it as. Um, and, and it's definitely not me being on a lofty perch looking down on somebody. I'm just really irritated and upset and hurt by seeing these kids and what's happening to them, knowing full well that as a community of addicts, we've caused this to children. It's about time we knock it off. You know, we there's so much time in rehab and everything else where people are talking about all the things that have been done to them. You know what? Not for nothing. One great way to heal from your own personal trauma is help your kid never face the fire that you went through. Create an environment that's so stinking safe that kid will never have to face what you went through. How about that? How about rather than dealing with our own stuff all the time, deal with our stuff as appropriate, make ourselves healthy, and make sure that our kids and those that we're responsible for have the absolute best fight and chance to walk through the fires that we had to face. We've already been burned. Let's go through it for them. Guys, I appreciate you tuning in. You know, consider what I'm sharing with you here. This is not something that Chris is pulling out of his head. These are rising numbers year on year. Our kids are in trouble. And they're saying that the successful completion of suicide is on the rise. Think about how many kids have at least thought about it for it to be that grave. That's chilling to me. You know, they in the one study I shared earlier in the year, and this has stuck with me since, 97% of the kids that had a significant depressive event that led to impairment refused to go to treatment. So all of those kids are out there without help. They're isolating. Let's help them come through. Let's learn from our mistakes. Let's take this world that we've burned to the ground as adults and help the next generation of kids Rise. See hope. Let's lay on those landmines for them. Let's help them get to where they got to go. That's the best thing we can do, and I, I believe that's an a excellent path to healing for all of us. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Please like and subscribe. You know, I love your comments on this this and other videos. Um, I appreciate, you know, your support. Um, you got a lot of screaming from a two-year-old in the background yelling for daddy, so I'm going to wrap this up. But, guys, until the next time we talk, you know, please stay out of trouble. <laughs>